This segment sponsored by GBMC Healthcare. Malcolm Berman Comprehensive Breast Care Center at GBMC sees and treats more than 2,000 patients a year, providing the latest technology in breast cancer treatment, surgery, and care. Today we're joined by Dr. Sarah Fogarty, breast surgeon, to talk about comprehensive breast care from mammograms to diagnosis. Welcome. Thanks for Welcome, being with us. Thank you so much. Of course. So, well, how, yeah, how early should we get a mammogram? When should we start this process? <laughs> right. So, um, screening recommendations, I, I, they change mm -hmm. a lot. Um, the most recent recommendations talk about screening starting at age 45. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of women start at 40. There's still a lot of um, controversy and um, a lot of discussion about that. Um, patients that are at higher risk that um, have family members that were diagnosed younger should start younger. Mm -hmm. um, 45 every year or 40 every year. Some women that have gene mutations um, that have a genetic predisposition to breast cancer mm -hmm. should also start maybe even younger than 40. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a conversation that you should have with your primary care and, or OBGYN um, to discuss your risks and screening and something that we see all the time. Um, and that's part of you know our, when we see patients that we're evaluating as a high risk patient um, we talk about their screening recommendations and when they should start and how often. Interesting. So mm -hmm. say we get an abnormal mammogram. Mm -hmm. What are the steps that we take after that? So an abnormal mammogram um, usually requires a callback image, meaning they need to come back for further imaging that they mm -hmm. um, weren't able to tell exactly what's going on and they need further workup. Okay. That can include more mammogram pictures, also ultrasound. Yeah. Um, sometimes that does lead to a recommendation of a biopsy. Sometimes it leads to a recommendation of a shorter course follow-up, meaning coming back in six months usually for another picture. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's completely benign and there's absolutely nothing you need to be doing except going back to your annual screening. Gotcha. Um, so it really varies. Um, people get callbacks a lot. It does not mean anything is wrong. So how are men diagnosed? Yeah, since they're not getting that sure. screening. Um, most men are diagnosed just because they feel something or see something. Um, so they noticed a lump their uh, partner noticed a lump, um, something that looks different on their chest. Um, obviously men that have family histories of breast cancer or are, have a known genetic mutation that could increase their chances of getting breast cancer should be examined um, at least once or twice a year by a breast specialist, by their primary care doctor um, to be evaluated. But no, there's no imaging um, recommendations for men. Gotcha. So if we do have a cancer diagnosis, um, what are the treatment options that we have available for us? There's a lot of treatment options, which is um, Good to great, know. Note, yes. great yes. news for breast cancer. Some cancers are not as many treatment options. So um, there's surgery, there's potentially chemotherapy, there's radiation therapy, hormone therapy. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different options. There's a lot of good drugs that all work. Um, patients have a lot of different um, options in front of them when I meet with them. A yeah. lot of patients will come in and say, why am I, you're telling me I need this when my grandmother had mm -hmm. this or this or my sister had this yeah it can be very different depending on the type of breast cancer they have so okay, it's a it's a long conversation um, we spend a lot of time with patients at our center going over their specific type of cancer what they are recommended for treatment making sure they understand why we're telling them the recommendations we're making mm -hmm. so why do some patients go through chemo and some patients don't Exactly that reason. It really depends on the type of cancer they have. Mm -hmm. um, and we are saving a lot of women chemotherapy that reflexively used to get it just because of maybe their age mm -hmm. or because there was disease in the yeah. lymph nodes. Um, we are saving women uh, chemotherapy based on new testing we do on the tumor itself to understand more about it. Is it a high risk type of tumor? Is it at a higher chance of coming back if we don't use chemo? And so ah, that also gotcha. dictates a lot um, for our patients. Some women have more aggressive cancers that chemotherapy is absolutely recommended, and we know that as soon as they get diagnosed, that that will be part of their treatment plan. Gotcha. But it really depends. Um, a lot of the estrogen-positive breast cancers, which is the majority of breast cancers, you know, so doesn't mean they need chemo. Interesting. So very, very briefly, yes. what can we do to keep ourselves healthy, try yes. to prevent this from happening to us? Sure, uh, you, so breast cancer is a disease of aging. You can't help getting older, you can't help your family history, but you can live a healthy lifestyle, sure. eating well, eating a balanced diet, keeping a normal ideal body weight, keeping your BMI down, mm -hmm. exercising. Um, that's really the best thing you can do for everything, not just breast cancer. Lifestyle changes. Exactly. Absolutely. You heard it first from the doc. That's right, thank you so much for being with sure. us. Sure, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Check out that website for more.